uh, good evening for the first time. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's good to see everybody back here uh, this evening. And we have our uh, announcements and upcoming events. Steve did a good job of tweaking the slides here. I just you know, want to make sure. Uh, he, he writes very fancy when he yeah. there's some. Uh, but again, just a reminder that we, we have a great opportunity to be able to pray for each other, with each other, and uh, praying to God. And we need to make sure we're using that at any opportunity we can. Uh, we have the, the list here as we went over this morning. And uh, just a reminder for those that are uh, recuperating from surgery and those who are praying for their insurance company and uh, those that uh, have things that are, that are going on. Again, just uh, we, we have this great family here. Let's keep praying for each other. And then, of course, uh, also continuing that to, to pray for our, our leaders and the church worldwide, especially those that are, are being persecuted just for being Christians. <clears throat> and then for those works that we support in uh, Costa Rica and India and Kenya. And uh, also uh, getting ready for uh, next week, uh, we have our uh, uh, dinner lined up for after our morning services. And so uh, then after that, we'll have our, our singing. So looking forward to being able to uh, talk with our mouth full and sing with a full belly. So uh, make sure you, you stick around for that. Uh, and then again, that reminder for us to be able to come together and uh, opportunities to uh, pick on each other. I mean, stir each other up, encourage each other. Uh, but you know, we have, of course, Bible classes at nine o'clock in the morning on Sundays and, and Wednesday nights at seven, and then our worship service at, at ten and five. Of course, we won't have worship service uh, next week at five o'clock. Uh, but uh, normally we, we will have that. We're going to start off with uh, a victory in Jesus. Mike's going to lead us in our singing. So uh, looking forward to being able to, to worship together. <coughs>
heaven, we thank you for all the blessings you give us each and every day. We thank you most of all for your son who you sent to this earth to save mankind through that cruel cross. And we pray that you'll watch after us as we serve you each and every day. We pray that you'll help us to change anything that we may need to change in our lives to be better in line with your will. And we pray that your son will always look upon us with a smiling face because we do his will as you would have us to do. And we pray that you'll help us to look for others that need to do your will, that they will be able to have comfort in your word by studying it, knowing it, and applying it to their lives. We pray for those many here who are sick and ill, and especially for those who are not able to be here because of those reasons. And we pray that you'll bless them and help them if it be possible to recover. And if not, have comfort in thee, knowing that these conditions will not always be before us. That when we are before you and this world and this life is over, we know that we'll have much comfort and there will be no more tears. And we pray that you'll help us to have comfort during those times when we think of you and think of the things that go on around us that may hurt us. But we are also very thankful for the joy you give us in knowing that we are Christians and knowing that we serve you and we have the comfort of brothers and sisters in Christ that can help us along the way. We know there's many in this world who do not serve you and there's many things that go on in this country and throughout this world that is not pleasing to you and we pray that if there be any way possible that you can help us to overcome those things through teaching others and through standing for your truth and standing for the right. We pray that you'll watch after those who may be going through, fixing to go through surgery and those who are healing from surgery, that they may continue to improve and gain much in their physical health uh, through doctors and nurses, that you'll watch after them and care for them through your providential care. We pray that you'll help us to better understand your word as we study it, to know more of it, to apply it to our lives and to others, and we pray that you'll help us as we go along the way. Please bless the children of this congregation that they may grow up in your love and admiration and that they will always be of such a nature that they can have strength and courage and that we may be good examples to them. Thank you for all that we have and bless us as we continue through this evening. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus, I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below. Anywhere without the nearest joys would fade. Anywhere with Jesus I am not Since uh, Mike had to sneak in an extra announcement, I will too. But that's the only reason. Okay, no. Uh, just uh, one more uh, item on your prayer list. Uh, we don't have as uh, many involved in uh, camp now, but uh, that is uh, Camp Watoga is uh, coming up. And uh, I know of a couple of campers that are uh, going to be heading that direction. Not Bob and Jeanette. Uh, go back one more <laughs> road. And... Uh, uh, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, they'll they'll have a, a week out there, and, and of course uh, also their Uber driver that is uh, sitting there with them, uh, going back and forth. That's a, a little a little jaunt up the mountain to be able to get to camp, but I'm I'm sure it'll be uh, fun and uh, education. So uh, if you want to go ahead and turn uh, into the book of Hebrews, we're going to look there in just a minute. But we're going to talk about this idea of obedience. And we sing a song, maybe you've heard of it, uh, it's uh, Trust and Obey. We, we've sung that a couple times here and there. Uh, but one of the lines is, uh, you know, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And that's uh, kind of the idea. So why, why wouldn't we want to obey? Uh, if, again, if, if that line is true, and, you know, if there was some place we could go to be able to find out if that line is true or not, but again, this idea, uh, you know, there, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And so I'm just going to, we're going to pretend like we've already read some verses that say exactly that. We're about to read them in, in just a minute. Uh, so why would we not want to be obedient to the Lord when, when we have some of these blessings, this uh, idea of, I mean, true happiness 
is coming from following after God's will. And I know the world says a lot of happy, you know, they, they sell, uh, you know, all kind of things to be happy. But, I mean, we, we know it's false advertising. I mean, they have fun size, uh, you know, the candy bars. That, you know, that, that's their version of fun. We have happy meals at McDonald's. And they're not usually really that happy. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather have something else. But the world uh, offers all of these different things to be happy. And we've got the source of happiness in, in God. So we look at uh, Psalm 119 and verse 2. We'll come back to uh, Hebrews in just a minute. Uh, Psalm 119 and verse 2. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, that seek him with the whole heart. Or uh, happy are they that keep his testimonies, uh, that seek him with a with the whole heart. Again, it's uh, those who are doing what he says to do, that's what leads to happiness. But again, it's, uh, you know, he, well, he's meddling. Because it's not only is it just doing it, well, he's got to throw that last part in there too. That seek him with the whole heart. And so it's um, do what he says to do and mean it. There's our path to happiness. Uh, Proverbs 19 and verse 16. He who keeps the commandment keeps his soul. That sounds like that would be a happy outcome, right? Especially considering the next line says, but he who is careless of his ways will die. And so again, kind of goes back to, are, are we keeping the Lord's ways? Are we following his instructions? Because that's going to lead us uh, into life uh, as for you know when we look at John 8 verse 51 truly truly I say to you if anyone keeps my word he will never see death again that, that sounds like a great recipe for eternal life in heaven uh, we need to make sure that we first know his word and then also able to keep it we look at uh, John chapter 14 if we, if we go back just a, a few verses this is verse 23 if we go back a few verses remember he says if you love me Keep my commandments. And so then in verse number 23, is if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Well, that sounds familiar, right? And then he goes on even further. It's not just, and now I can mark him off the list. He's done. He loves me. I've, I've seen it. Okay, who's next? There's more for the person who is being obedient to what Jesus is uh, throwing out there as far as instructions for us. Not only do we show our love for Jesus by doing what he says. He says, my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. And again, we have this opportunity to have our father uh, love us right back, have a relationship with us, be able to talk to us. Uh, again, we have his uh, letter to us. We have his ear anytime we want in prayer. We have his family right here together, some of which you know we can we can see with our own eyeballs, and and there's a, a family that's all around the world that's available to us. We have uh, the, the blessings that are found inside Christ, all because we love Jesus, and we're keeping His word. So there's there's bonus. Hebrews chapter five, uh, verse number nine, and being made perfect, He became the source of eternal salvation. To all who obey him. Again, we, we know. We talked about it this morning. We've mentioned it before. I mean, there's, there are two destinations that everyone is moving towards. It, it's heaven or it's hell. The one who has decided, here's what it takes for eternal salvation. Well, he is a, he's the source. Not a source. Not somebody that we probably rely on. The source. Our salvation comes from being obedient to Him. And so we started off talking about this idea of trust and obey, for there's no other way. Um, we look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and, and verse 24. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Trust. Again, if We've been told over and over again, do, do the will of God, uh, follow the will of, of Jesus. 
and all these uh, blessings are going to go. We see Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you again. The, the, he's going to take care of us here on earth. And then, of course, then also take care of us uh, for all eternity. He will surely do it. We can trust him. Over and over and over again, we see through the scriptures, God promised something was going to happen. He is batting a thousand. Every single time it's time for it to happen, it happens exactly the way that God said it was going to happen. We can trust that. But let's look at this idea of obedience. And we'll talk about, just for a second, what obedience is not. Uh, just to make sure that we're on the same page, uh, when, when Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments... What does that look like? Well, first, let's see what that doesn't look like. Um, obedience is not doing some of what God says to do. Uh, and usually my go-to verse is 1 Samuel 15. Uh, that's, of course, Saul. He's been given instructions. Uh, you know, it's very vague. Kill all the Amalekites. Kill all the animals. Wipe everything out. It's just so vague. I mean, how can he follow those instructions? Well, he did, as unvague as they really are. And, of course, Samuel comes in, and, uh, of course, Saul is so proud to see Samuel there, and Saul is like, I've, done, I've fulfilled your instructions. I've done what the Lord said to do. And Samuel says, well, something else sounds bad around here. He says, what is the meaning of this, uh, the, the bleeding that he said? I'm hearing animals. Do you normally take all these, uh, you know, sheep and oxen and uh, you take all these animals with you when you go to battle? Saul was so proud. There were so many dead people. He had done most of what God said to do over uh, those people. God's people. Yes, I'm the king. But, you know, it's those people. They decided they were going to keep uh, some of the animals for sacrifice to God. Because, you know, you, nothing, nothing is as sacrificial as giving somebody else's stuff away. Oh, and also we saved the king. Because, you know, it just felt right. You know, golden rule and all. <laughs> He did not do what God said to do. And Samuel let him know how displeased God was in following 95% of what God said to do. Psalm 119. It, it, is this us? We look at uh, verse number 57. Uh, the Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. Whatever it is, I'm in a hurry to get them done because I want you to see that I'm doing them, God. Now, we may not have a puff of smoke coming out behind us because we're moving so fast to do what God wants us to do. Uh, do they have any cheetahs at the um, uh, little petting zoo that, uh, the, the, no, Lake Harwell Animal Farm? Okay, yeah, so we can't go see what that looks like firsthand and close by. But Google, uh, you know, a, a, a cheetah, and you can see how fast, again, uh, one that is hungry and thirsting after supper. And there is us, hungering and thirsting after doing what God wants us to do. Is, is that us? Or are we in a hurry to do the things that, I know I can do this pretty quick and knock it out and it's no big deal, because I'm going to hold off on some of this other stuff over here when I have a better time to do it. Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, uh, hopefully familiar to all of us. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. What part can we skip and still be okay? 
that's a that's a conversation that I've had. I know others have had with people about Bible verses. That oh, here, no, no, you read it out of your Bible. Read, read this verse. Let's let's read verses. Let's let's have this discussion. And, and so, so it, it, it says all of these things. Okay, which ones can we leave off and still be okay? And sometimes they even have an answer. And so, okay, what Bible verse tells me that I can go and pick and choose and figure out which part of the Bible verses can I skip and still be okay? So far, nobody's been able to point me to that verse. It's not there. Obedience is doing everything that God says to do. Uh, we look at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 5, and, and Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and, and it's the church. I mean, it, 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 here are Christians, and they've got some things that they're not doing right. They have some things that they're doing right. But Paul is reminding them that um, you know, it's not a we're not on a scale. And as long as you're doing the, the you know, more good things than bad things, you're okay. They had sexual immorality in the church. And even though they were doing some of the things that God said to do, here was something that they decided were a little more progressive than other churches. And they were even more progressive than the heathens that were around them, according to what Paul said. Get sin out. How much can we hold on to and still be okay? Uh, Paul did not go into that. Because you know, we understand a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. It doesn't take much sin to be able to then grow to the next person sinning and the next person sinning. Well, it was okay over here. So I should get my shot at it as well. John chapter 15, verse number 1. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. The branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. I... Yeah, I mean, you know where my garden is located. It's, uh, you know, the Ingalls grocery store. Much fewer weeds there in those aisles. But I've seen vines with uh, grapes on them, and I've never seen any grapes of wrath. They always look really happy just sitting there on the vine. But again, I understand the concept. You've got the vine coming up out of the ground. All of a sudden, these branches go out. You have the, the fruit uh, you know, dangling off, and, and everything's all held up. Can we cut a branch off and, and throw it over and uh, let it uh, come back in you know, a few days and, and kind of throw it back onto the pile and say, okay, now it's going to start growing fruit again? And then I'm going to pull it back. I, again, I've, I've not been to school for this, but I'm pretty sure that's not how farming works. When something is lopped off from the vine, it, it's dying. It's not getting the nutrients. We can't. We can't be part time. We can't give our father uh, visitation rights and only see him on the weekends. We need to be obedient to him all the time, to be pleasing to him, to show our love 
screen. And we can't go above and beyond. Obedience is not doing more than what God said to do. Let me show you how much I love you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do what you told me. And I'm going to do even more. He just wants us to do what he instructed us to do. Uh, we see in 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 6, I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. We can be too far. It is uh, really, really hard to follow Jesus if he is behind us. If we have stepped out in front of him and we are leading the charge, and I'm sure this is what he wants, well, thankfully he has given, he has given us everything that he wants us to do. We don't have to do more. 2 John, uh, verse number 8, Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Again, that kind of goes back to Ephesians 1 and verse 3, where all spiritual blessings are found in Christ. If we are going beyond Christ, we've just lost the in Christ. And so we've also lost all spiritual blessings. Revelation 22, uh, verse number 18, I, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. And so I, you know, I've got the note there. I mean, it, God's math is, is, is pretty simple. It's not that uh, new math. He just took out adding and subtracting all together. We just need to do what he says to do. Oh, we need, we need people in here, so what are we going to do? Well, we probably need to build a gym so that they have a place to come and play basketball. That will bring them in. We need to make sure that they are entertained properly, so we got shows we can put on. And so let's... Uh, I have uh, a, a Bible theater as, as part of our worship. That'll, that'll get them coming in. Uh, you know, we, we, need to, we need to make sure that we uh, have enough money coming in, so let's get all up close and personal and, and uh, make sure that everybody's given the right amount, and I'll be the one to decide that. We can go too far. Again, even if we mean will, we can go too far. We just need to do what he says to do. Doing the right thing with the wrong attitude is not obedience. Again, we kind of we talked about it in the very beginning. One of the first slides talked about again, you know, going after him with, with our whole heart. Uh, Romans chapter six again. This idea of we are serving our master. It's either sin or it's the Lord. But uh, again, uh, you were once slaves of sin. You've uh, become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and have been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. And again, th this is something God knows. Are we doing this for the right reason? Did we uh, go ahead and, and uh, you know, give the confession that we believe that Jesus was the Son of God? Did, did we say, yes, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change, I'm going to repent, it's time to get baptized, okay, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going under, popping back up, I'm just going to make sure that girl that I'm trying to impress is, is watching me. I've done everything that I'm supposed to do, but she said she wouldn't date anybody unless they were a Christian. I'm a Christian now. Not that that's ever happened before. And you could fill in the blank on any other reason that's out there that doesn't have anything to do with, I'm a sinner, I need God to fix me. I'm going to do exactly what he says to do and obey the gospel. It's obedience from the heart. 
1 Corinthians uh, 13, uh, verse number 1, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Uh, again, you know, we, we know uh, John reminds us multiple times that, that God is love. Well, he expects his children to be exactly the same thing. Is our heart in our obedience to him? Or, well, God said I have to do this, so let's go ahead and get it over with. I've done it. He's not asking us to clean our room. And we do it begrudgingly. Sorry, Mom. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse number 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? We know what God's done for us. He, he developed this plan even before we were alive, even before time began. And that, that plan included I'm going to send Jesus to the cross. He is going to be brutally murdered. And he's going to be innocent, but he's taking the place for everyone. Because I love everyone. We see by what God did, his love for us. He didn't have to do it. I mean, that's where we look at Ephesians 2, uh, 8 and 9. And again, talking about by grace we're saved. He didn't have to save us. But he is showing us his love. Here. I want you to be in heaven with me for all eternity. Let me pay the price for you. How do we return that to him? Well, you know, no, we can't ever pay him back for it. But when we are obedient to him, are we like our five-year-old, kicking and screaming and pouting and holding our breath long enough uh, so that we turn blue and eventually we'll do it just because I have to. Or do we love you? Are we obeying with the right attitude? Are we obeying with our whole heart? Because that's what he's looking for. Of course, just knowing what to do is not obedience, uh, just to be able to recite scriptures or just to mark off the list saying, hey, I've read that verse. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And, and there those those two words. It is, it is really, really scary. And, and we see it in multiple places. Deceiving yourselves. We could know the Bible and have a familiarity with it. And, and we could hear things as, oh yeah, that's true. I don't do any of that. But I know that's true because I've read it. So I must be okay. And we can convince ourselves that we are totally fine. If you want to see any proof of that, uh, listen, you, you make sure you come on, on Wednesday nights to uh, Bible class because the, the Jewish leaders, that's exactly what they were doing. They were so wrong. But in their minds, they were so right. Righteous, holy people. God was proud of them for crucifying Jesus. We can be fooled just like they were. We can deceive ourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror or looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. Uh, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. And I, I understand that. I understand, you know, again, you, you walk into a room and trying to figure out why you were there in the first place. I understand forgetting things. But again, it's, again, this look in a mirror is okay. 
my hair around? I can't remember. I gotta go back. I, again, you know, that's uh, James is saying. You know, don't don't be like that when it comes to the scriptures. Learn what we need to do. Go ahead and do it. <clears throat> Just knowing is not enough. Uh, we see in James four, verse seventeen. Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Our education can hurt us. We need to know what to do to be pleasing to God. But when we know and we decide, hey, I'm going to skip that, that is worse for us. We are voluntarily sinning and deciding, God, I've, I've got this. I'm going to do it my way. And we have that choice. It's just not the right one. So why do we find obedience to be difficult? Well, the first thing was, again, we, we show our uh, heart in our obedience. Uh, and so uh, we look at uh, this idea of, do we have a, an opportunity to do something? Uh, well, you know, Felix had an opportunity to hear the gospel. And then he decided, Paul said, listen, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you again later when I have, a, when I have an opportunity, when I, when I really want to hear it. He was afraid. As he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment, Felix was alarmed. He was afraid. And so, um, well, it looks, uh, it looks pretty bad if a leader puts his head in the sand. That's, that's what ostriches do. So he just sent Paul away. I'll call you back again later. Are we like that with our obedience? Well, let me find a really good time to do what God wants to do. I, I know what to do. I, I, I feel that I can do it. It's not convenient right now. Well, you know, Paul talked about it with Timothy, you know, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, we mentioned it this morning again, that pre preaching the truth in season or out of season. The truth is always the right thing to say because that's going to help us and whoever's listening get to heaven even if we know how they're going to react we can't wait on a convenient time if we put it off you know what's going to happen later probably we're going to find a good reason to put it off again uh, we have uh, let's see spring summer winter fall we don't have a convenient season. So if we're waiting on that one, well, we'll never have to do it. What if the Lord waited until a more convenient time to be obedient to God? What if Jesus was just like us and decided, I can put that off. I can do that later. Again, waiting for a more convenient time. That would be one of those less painful times. That would be one of those less deadly times. Again, we're reflections of him. He came at an inconvenient time. It, it was right on time. It was God's time. But it was inconvenient. He was tortured and imprisoned and put on trial and lied about and murdered. That doesn't sound convenient. And that's exactly what he did because of us. Are we chomping at the bit to do what he wants us to do? Or can we hurry up and wait? And again, can we, we show our love. We show our heart. We show where our, our treasure is when we come across God's instructions and we decide that can wait. I need to have a conversation with somebody. Uh, well, I can wait on them for, for a more convenient time. And, and that's probably more like I know they're not going to like what I have to say. And so I don't want to feel like that right now. So I'm going to put my feelings off for a little bit. 
How much time do they have left? Do you love them enough to tell the truth? Or do you love yourself enough to let them be lost? Because you don't want to feel awkward, embarrassed, chastised, punished. Obedience is not always convenient. Why is it hard for us to obey sometimes? Because we, we don't always understand. Uh, we look at uh, Genesis chapter 6. Noah, I need you to build an ark. I'm going to flood the planet. It's going to rain a lot. What's that? I didn't even know what rain was. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy the earth. I'm going to destroy the people that are on it. I need you to build an ark. And Noah said, Okay. I don't think, again, I, I don't think he grasped everything that was about to happen. But God said, build an ark, and here's how you're going to build it. And he said, okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, uh, uh, you know, a few chapters later, Abraham, I need you to take a trip. Oh, okay, where are we going? I'll show you. We're going, we're going that direction. I mean, I, I just you know, imagine him selling this to his family. Come on, let's all pack up. Let's go. Come on, Dad. We're, we're going on a trip. Where are we going? God said it was that way. How long is this going to be? How, how, much, how many socks do I need to take? So, you know, socks and sandals, of course. I mean, you had to be prepared. You better grab them all. I don't know. We're just going that way. He, I don't think he understood exactly what was happening. Uh, Moses, uh, of course, you know, he had the uh, uh, burning bush he was talking to, or at least, uh, you know, again, uh, receiving the message there. And go back to Egypt. Really? I mean, because he'd been gone for 80 years. I really didn't lose anything there. I need you to go get my people. We're going to get them out. You're going to lead them. He eventually said yes. He had some concerns. He didn't understand what he was about to get into. God didn't say, let me tell you about these plagues I'm going to throw on. You're going to see so many frogs. I hope you like uh, locusts and honey. I don't know how much honey we're going to have. We're going to have a lot of locusts. I don't think he understood everything that was about to happen. But God said, go ahead. And he said, yes. Why baptism? I mean, we're, we're taking somebody, we're putting them underwater, and then they come back up and they're all wet. And you know, 1 Peter 3, 21, even he says, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not, we're, we're not washing sin off. This is not a bath. Uh, you know, take them down with the, the holy Irish strings and then come back up and we'll wash that sin right out of their hair. It's not, uh, that's not what we're doing. God said to do it. Okay. See, again, we, and we, we can go into the explanation of all these things, but uh, you know, the examples that are up above there, uh, Noah, Abraham, Moses, eventually they figured out most of what was going on, at least with them. There was more down the road that they wouldn't grasp that, that we get the benefit of being able to look back and, and see it. Understanding can wait. Obedience cannot. Again, you have Noah and, and providing his family. Listen, y'all need to get on this ark. Yes, it's probably going to smell bad for a little while. But we'll be alive to smell it. Okay. And they did. Obedience is eternal life and death. And just because we don't have every single answer. I was like this morning. How 
does that work with the wood and plates and spoons and that? How's God knocking out all those bacteria? Bacteria, bacteria is whatever a bunch of bacteria. I don't know, but it happens. We don't have to understand every single thing that's out there. We do have to be obedient. See, with uh, with man, uh, we're we're really really smart. You got uh, Thomas Edison there. It, it, there's a way to do it better. Find it. So he didn't invent the light bulb. He made a way to make light bulbs work a whole lot better. And unfortunately, that's the way we are sometimes with religion. Okay, here's what we got. You know, we can make this better. We can tweak it a little bit and change things here and there, and and, and, and we can make this more aerodynamic. You know, we'll get to heaven faster, more efficient. Uh, you look at uh, Naaman, we talked about him a few weeks ago, 2 Kings 5. He knew a much better place that he could go swimming, something that didn't look like the Chattahoochee. He knew a much better way for him to be healed of leprosy. This needed to be an event. The prophet of God needed to come out, and, and all of a sudden the sky gets dark and lightning going all over, and he's uh, sacrificing a chicken over the uh, leprosy, and, you know, ooh, and an eye, and, 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 and some big, awesome thing, and now he sends his servant out. He says, go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Shalom. And, and leaves. It's not how you heal leprosy. Oh, well, until it is. He thought there was a better way when all they had to do was be obedient to God. And so we're going to come up on times where we have the uh, name and experience. Hey, this is what uh, we need to be doing. Really? Is that? Well, I know the scriptures say that, but is there a better way? Can we uh, tweak this just a little bit? And, and we need to be ready. We need to be already ready already. When it comes time to be tempted to go beyond or do less or do something different or, you know, I've got this really great idea. Are we ready to just do what God said to do? Genesis 39. Joseph was ready. Um, he had an offer that he could refuse. And he did from Potiphar's wife. He ran away from temptation. He didn't decide to see how close he could get just to see, am I really going to say no? He just said no. You have uh, Daniel, chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. This was before he was offered the king's dainties. I think that's the King James Version. Uh, basically, the, the king's food and wine and all that. He knew before he was even asked, I am not going to eat this. I'm not going to drink this because God doesn't want me to. Are we prepared for something like that? Do we know I'm going to do what God says that I need to do? Our obedience is up to us. And Again, that's that choice that we get. That's that choice that God gives us. Uh, it's us being being disciplined. It's us being uh, mature Christians, growing in the faith. <coughs> From a uh, babe in Christ into a mature Christian. Knowing that, again, we, we keep adding our, to our faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We, we study, we learn, we apply, we, we do it. Uh, we share it with others. We, we're growing. That is how we get the discipline to be obedient. And if we are fighting against ourselves, we are fighting against our family, we're fighting against the entire world, we're fighting against the devil, we're fighting against our television, our radio. There's a lot we're fighting against. God's fighting for us. He's going to win. Do we want to be with him or not? If it's hard to fight, just keep remembering what we're fighting for. 
it's going to be worth it. Being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation. And then that last part. To all who obey him. It's simple. Are we obeying him or not? We can answer that for ourselves. God, of course, can already answer that as well. So between the two of us, we should know the answer. Am I being obedient right now? Or is there a sin in my life that I need to get rid of? Is there something keeping me from being obedient? I promise, if we are at Judgment Day right now, you will be saying to yourself, well, that sin wasn't worth it. Why not go ahead and get rid of it now while you can? Talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness. Be willing to change. Come back to him. Be obedient again. Walk in the light. We're uh, going to sing a song here in just a minute. Uh, stand up. Stand up for Jesus. And uh, Yes, we're actually going to stand in just a minute and, and sing this, but that's not really what it's talking about. Uh, the fact that we can uh, actually get up on our feet and, and stand up and be tall. Our confession of him that we make before we become a Christian, well, that's something that uh, we can keep saying over and over again. That is something that we can show over and over again. Let me show you how I know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Watch me obey him. Watch me show my love for him as my Savior. Let's do that. Here is we're together. And even as we walk out that door, let's stand up for him together as the church, as individual Christians. We can't do that with sin. Get rid of that first. And then stand up for Jesus. And if we can help you do that, let us know as we stand and say. And up and up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be
so freely in this life that you provided for us all that is needed for us, not only now, but especially for eternity. We give you thanks and honor you for your great gifts. We thank you for the life of your Son, that we might follow as an example of obedience to you, and that we might be pleasing to you. We thank you for your word that you've given to us and that has been presented before us tonight. And that we might hear these things, we can study these things, and that we can determine in our lives that we might follow you to keep your will above all things in our lives. We pray, Father, for those who couldn't be with us tonight. We know that there are some who are uh, recovering from uh, surgery, from illness, from disease. And we pray that you be with them and uh, strengthen them, comfort them as only you know. We pray for those who are struggling spiritually that are weak in faith. We pray that we might uh, see opportunities to be an encouragement to them as we encourage one another. That we might live a good life and to uh, demonstrate to others the blessings that we have in this life. And that others can see the blessings that we have, that our lives will be an attraction to them. And that we might have opportunity to, to teach others, to encourage others, to be faithful to you. We pray that you be with each of us as we go from this place, that you grant us safety, that you help us uh, each day of our lives after this day, uh, should you not return before, that we might live faithfully for you and to, to always uh, be a light wherever we might be. We thank you for your love, for your great gifts. We pray for your wisdom, for your guidance, that we might be good stewards of all your blessings. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.